Okay, so we got this uh, little girl out. Now, she was here last year and we sent her home because she hadn't matured very much. She was very, very backward, um, in my opinion. You know, physically, mentally, she was all right. You know, she was good. So it's just coming like she's four year old now off. And um, oh, it's got a five year old teeth in. I don't know where her actual birthday was. But uh, anyway, she goes lovely, nice, but she's a warrior. Um, and although she looks in nice condition and she's well covered, I've noticed that yeah, the least little thing would worry her. Not, not make her stupid, you know, not, but you could see her eyes would be wide. What are you doing there? Why are you doing that? You know, what are you coming in in my stable with? You know, whatever you was doing, she's a bit uptight. And I thought to myself, this is no good. And I noticed that she was tucked up. Um, as soon as she come, for instance, she come out in bumps all over, hives, another nervous thing, you know, and she's of that type. Lovely horse to drive, and beautiful, we've got her going really well. Um, the ch I said to the fella, take her home and don't bother doing anything with her, and he long reined her. We had a bit of problem with that because we don't long rein in the same way other people do. Um, so, you know, we had a couple of problems where she's, well, quite a few problems, where she's plunging into the collar um, and that type of thing. So, anyway, that aside, we noticed. So, I called the vet because I weren't happy, you know, the way she was. And sure enough, it's turned out um, that she's got old stomach ulcers, which, you know, is what I thought. I said the vet, I think he's got a stomach ulcer, so I said, well, it's either that or two or three other things. So whilst the vet was here, rather than just give it gastrogold to sort the ulcers out, um, she'd done a blood test. The blood test confirmed that there was nothing else, liver and everything was all right. But um, nice pony, you know, a nice little cob. It's moving a lot better than it was by that. I mean, it was immature in its body, so now... It'll pick a knee up, you know, and it's got a decent action, I think, uh, spectacular. Um, and does everything, but it's just that nervous side of her. She'll sit there all day long, won't worry about the traffic, but silly little things will bother her. You know, not. it's not like you could say, oh, there's a bird in the hedge, you know, everyone's heard that one, and it'll jump out. It's not really that sort of bother. She won't bother about things like that. We've got a motor car coming past her now. We, you know, we see her with that tractor earlier on. She's standing, taking notice of the car coming past. She go over this muck that's on the road from a previous horse we've had down. She don't care. She don't look at it. Nothing like that. But silly little things would worry her. So if you uh, say, for instance, if you give her her ailage instead of putting it in her rack, you was to put it in a hay net and hang it over the door. She wouldn't just come straight up to it. She'd have to investigate it, look at it, smell it, check it. And then as soon as she took a bite or pulled a bit of A and, 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 the, and the A net was to move, she'd then move back, you know. So funny little girl. She's happiest, to be perfectly honest, you know. She's happiest in a quiet part of the stable or being driven. I mean, you can see there, her ears are pricked forward, her tail's off her quarters. She's happy, she's snorting, blowing herself, enjoying being out in the old fresh air. It's a crisp, cold day. And she's up for it, and she'd go, you know, but as far as being safe, if I said to her now, like, she's coming round here, pent up. And I said to her, steady, babe. Uh-oh. Straight back again, little jig jog trot. Yeah, no trouble at all. No pressure on the reins to speak of. Just absolutely lovely little girl. See that little jig jog there, look. Just it's hardly more than a walk. We try and do with all of them. Good, she heard me say walk, so she walked. Trot, jig, 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 jig. You see, look, nothing on jig, 
Jig, no reins on it. Jig, trot. Should go away to trot. So you could come down here and she'd go over them signs, no problem at all. Another time you'd come down here and say the gas ball's been out or the water ball and sprayed a bit on the road, she'd want to walk around it and investigate it and not be, you know, anything she's not sure of, she finds hard to handle. It's just my opinion. And it doesn't manifest itself in her behavior. You've got to be able to read her and you'll see she'll get a bit uptight. She'll get a bit tucked up. She'll go and, you know, stand at the back of her stable. Anything where she's not quite sure. Um, I know you get some horses like that, like you get nervous people, nervous disposition. She's a bit that way. Well, the problem is it, it can manifest itself in, in ulcers. It can be all sorts of things, but ulcers is a normal one. And then so she come here, was transported here, obviously. She'd been here before. Um, Last year, as I was saying, we sent her home because she wasn't very mature. She's matured up marvellously in a short time, really, about eight, nine months, I think she's been away. Um, something like that, um, I'm not sure. But uh, she matured up, she's filled out, she's made herself, she sprung her ribs. You know, she's definitely a lovely little cob. No two ways about that. She's uh, one of Joe Rose bred horses, she's a good sort. Get up. And... Um, Nice little girl. Come on, baby, on you go. That's it. If you're not worried about traffic, we haven't been able to do the traffic training with her that we would have liked to have done because once she, she was here, she come up in them hives on arrival within side no time. She looked like she'd been stung by a thousand bees. She was covered over all over with hives, you know, lumps that come up. So we just stood her quiet, talked to her like that, and uh, give her a little brush, gentle, gentle, very gentle brush over like that, let her settle in, and within an hour to two hours, they were virtually gone. Another sign of nerves, but, you know, every horse is different. We we'll always say, what's good for one is not good for another. So this little girl, we've got her on the gastroguard, She's definitely improving there. Where she was tucked up tight, she's nowhere near as much as she was. We're on the fourth day now, I think, of Gastrogard, or third or fourth day, um, of her having the uh, treatment, which is only a paste that goes in the stomach, given the same as a wormer. Um, and the vet said to her she can do some light work. Well, we had the mare fit, you know, because we've been working with her. Going home tomorrow, I think it is. She goes home tomorrow. The fella's coming down for her, pick her up. But, you know, you wouldn't get a better little cob. She's safe on the road. Um, we've done that. The only thing we haven't done, I haven't taken her down to town in heavy traffic. But I know she'd do it by how she behaves around here with lorries or anything. She's got no real concern at all. So she would do it. The reason I haven't done it, it's a seven mile trip to drive her down into Andover where all the traffic is. Trot on, babe. To drive her down there. Now, if we put her in a box and transport her down there, that is stressful. You know, travelling them in a trailer or a lorry is a stressful thing. Steady, baby. Is a, is a stressful thing for them. Steady, my darling. There's a good baby child, steady. Good girl. That's it, my sweetheart, you good girl. You do some miles down to town, you still want her to be up on her toes and fresh and not worn out. And you see the little swish of the towel here. There's no badness in her, she wouldn't kick back or do anything like that. That's just where she gets a little twinge, I think. Be nice if you could talk to him and ask her, but I think she get a little twinge in her belly, you know, just a little twitch in her stomach, and you know, makes her just swish her towel, you know, a little bit. You can see her wince a bit sometimes when. Oh shit! Now the reason we don't want to take her over far is, I suppose the best way I can explain it is if you had toothache or a headache or a 
bad hand where you've cut yourself bad and got stitches, you wouldn't go out for a run, would you? And the reason you wouldn't go is because you'd be pumping the blood around your body. Well, it's the same when you've got them little ulcers, all that blood vessels are being worked more because the blood is pumping around more. So, consequence, it would irritate us. And then I'll go, well, we've got this far, you know, we're going along happy. So what we're going to try and do, we've got plenty of time set aside, because this is later in the day, it'll be the last horse out this afternoon, you know, it's about three o'clock now, I suppose, half past. So we can afford to spend a bit of time with her, just letting her go round nice and steady like we're doing here. But the little girl, look, hold this back down here, no trouble at all, I haven't got any brakes on. And she's hold it, bring it back to a walk. All the things you want. There's no stress in her, her ears are full with her towels well set, you know, well away from her quarters. And there's nothing indicating to me that as far as being driven, she's got a problem. It's just we don't want to pump her blood up too much. Come over. I'm just gonna take her in the water now. Um, So that's the only thing, but I'm not, if I was concerned, you know, as long as the guy can, I've never seen the fella drive, but as long as he can drive and knows how to handle horse, he'll have no problem at all. But, you know, I mean, a walk in here, just lovely. She likes water, this mare. She didn't like it when we first tried her, but now she thinks it's fun. You know, even on a cold day like today. And when she gets back, she'll be washed out with the pressure washer with hot water and then scrape dry and a rug will go on. But she quite likes all this. If you hold her ear for a minute. See her look. Jumps up and splashes her feet. You know, she's a proper old character. Like that, look. What she'd love to do is lay down and roll in it, you know. Um, there yeah, my baby. And she puts her head right in. Yeah, it's a proper old funny thing, you know. Come on, darling, let me go. And never bulks about, you know, what she did first off last year. She didn't want to go in the water. But um, she never bulks at it now. She'll come and just go in as happy as a lot. But it's, you know, obviously what comes comes first is the horse, isn't it? It's there. They want to be happy and want to go to work. Trot, babe. Trot. You know, that's all we're looking for is that they're happy and want to go to work. Then you can teach them. That's easy, you know, to teach them. It's when they're up tight. Trot on. Come on. Um, now, I just asked her then. You see, she was just jig-jogging. I said to her, trot on like that. Now, if she comes up here and she slows again, you know, she's at a nice pace there, that's lovely. If she started slowing up, I'd think, yeah, all right, we'll turn around here and go back, you know. But all the time she's jig-jogging along like this, her ears are pricked, the towel's off her, and she's happy enough, then that's lovely. But, you know, the wonderful thing would be if you could talk to them and say, you know, how's your belly feel now? But it must be improving with the gastro guard, the fact that it is day four uh, today, she had a five day course on it. Or a seven day, I'm not sure. So, very, very, you know, you've got a lot of responsibility when you take someone's horse and you don't have to agree with them. And if I don't agree, you know, with what they've said about the horse and I see it in a different light, I've got to go with what I believe, so I'll phone anybody up and I'll say, look, I think I should have the vet out to this horse. If they say to me, no, I don't want a vet, I'll say, well, you come pick the horse up then. Because obviously I wouldn't be getting one for the fun of having it. All they are is a pain to me. When the vets come out, you've got to stand there talking to them, you know, sort the problem out, what's it, and then deal with it. It gives you another load of work that you can well do without when you're Got so many horses, you know, waiting to come in. But this little mare's going lovely. I mean, she's happy, her ears are pricked forward. Come on, baby. 
no slapping her, no, you know, tapping her with a whip, no hollering and shouting, just call her away gently. And she'd go if I say to her now. Trot on, Gil. Pick the pace straight up, you can hear her on her beat, yeah? No rain on her, she'll stay like that. I know she's happy. And that love's just gone over a manhole there, the manhole cover's loose. Makes a nice rattling, bumping noise behind her. She's not gone, you know, diving forward or anything like that. Nothing really upsets her. Come over, my baby child. And what I do when I come down here, I've not done it with this mare so far. So I bring her over into this bit of a lay-by here, and you've got a load of dry leaves, you know, that will run over here. And the twigs and like that. You know, sometimes that'll... Oh, what's that noise, you know? But she's not like that. So it's a funny old thing. She's got certain things will just upset her, unnerve her. And she doesn't show it like other horses. She'd be someone, um, how could you say, you know, you, you know, putting it in a human terms, she'd be someone who'd just go quiet, stand at the back of the room, wouldn't have a lot to say, yeah? Um, withdrawing herself, that's um, how she deals with it, you know, when she's uptight. So any horse that comes here is under stress and strain travelling. When you see some of the ways horses, we had one horse come here that was, uh, well, happened twice. Maybe even more times than that now, I come to think, but where the lorry's broken down and they've either towed it or lifted the front of the lorry, because they're that near here, it's easier to drop the horse off and then deal with the lorry. So, steady, my baby. There's all types of things, you know, that can upset them, but transport, you know, if you look and just read up about it, you know, the transportation of horses is very stressful. New environment is very stressful. New horses, new routines, all those are stressful things. So you've got to, you know, give them a bit of room when they first arrive. But seeing after a few days of, of being here and with the hives she had as well, the bumps all over her, and, you know, she was tucked up, I thought, you know, there's something else going on here more than that because she would have started settling. She's eating all right, but um, so anyway, we was we was right in this case. We thought it was the old ulcers, and sure enough, that's what it is. And she's on these gastric guard now, and it's definitely improved her. Oh, come round here. Here we come and just join this main road a bit easy. Come on, drop, baby. So I wouldn't force her, I just asked her. No tapping her with the reins, I don't want to be pushing her at all. I want her to, I'll ask her, if she wants to do it, that's fine. If she wants to walk now, then we'd walk. Under normal circumstances, I'd want the horse to do what I want it to do, at my discretion. But she's happy to do it. And here, like she's seen the hill in front of her, you can see her pick it up to take this up the hill. I'll drop her head down as soon as she feels the weight on her collar and she'll go to work, you know. So obviously there's no swish of the towel here. She's not shaking her head. There's nothing saying to me that she's in any way, you know, got discomfort. The only other thing with this horse is she's terribly nosy. She wants to have a look at things. So if there was someone down there over, the, you know, on the footpath, she wouldn't be scared, but she'd want to have a look. Or she'd go down if there's a hedge and someone's in a garden, she wouldn't jump away from the hedge, you know, where they was making the noise in the garden. She'd lift her head up and have a look over. So it's, she's quite a complex thing, really, you know, the way she deals with things. Now, you've got to think of that, and you've got to try and understand how they feel, you know, and try and see the world through their eyes. That's what I try and do anyway, you know. And don't give them a load of... Our nonsense, you know, about how wonderfully intelligent they are. They're intelligent in their own way. You know, now that's a beautiful one. Air brake's just gone off right behind her. And that proves me point 100%. There she is, startled her for a second. She ain't done a thing. I've not pulled her, done anything there. And she's just clip-clopping away as she was. Right by the side of her, the air brakes have gone off on the dust cart. 
so you couldn't ask for more, could you? I mean, absolutely lovely. And all this is being done in a soft rubber bit, you know, that we use. So we having, don't put great lumps of cant and leave a metal in their mouth and a curved chain behind that. Um, we don't do it, you know, or we do it in a soft bit of rubber. Well, that proves to me, they all talk about, I don't know, join up and uh, communication, you know, a wonderful bond you got with your horse. Well, I think you've got a good bond with your horse if your horse will do what you asked, be out there on its own with confidence, doing what you're requesting it to do with a soft piece of rubber in its mouth, with no whips or anything to drive it on, just jig-jogging along there, happy to do the job. Well, that to me, is, you've, you've done everything, that's it. And we've got this old truck coming past now, nice and noisy. Again, nothing at all. And we've got to forgive her a little bit. What you've got to remember, we've just been in the river a couple of minutes ago and her old towel's still wet. And uh, she can fill that up her legs and everything like that. So she's bound to want to dry her towel out and give it a swish, you know what I mean? Go on, my darling, up you go. See what I mean now? Look, it's not frightened by anything. She's saying, who's in there? Who's down there? She's not running past it, she's not running away from it, but she's nosy. Which you can, you know, with horses like that, you can use that to your advantage. Brilliant. Brilliant oh, nosy horse, because you take them in the arena and you want to train them up, you know, to cope with the things in there. Well, if they're nosy, they've got an investigating nature, haven't they? So they're going to go and investigate what you want them to stick their head through or go over. So you're, you're halfway there, you know a lot of the time because you know where you get another one don't want to go anywhere near the problem you know these will go and have a look at it anyway this type I'm going to get down here a bit we've got a car behind us once we got the cars gone what I shall do is I'll start to, you know, just show you the control you can have with a, see there like, if you look up that driveway, she can't stop herself, knows you the days long. But don't condemn that, use it to your advantage, use your brain to say to yourself, well, right, we'll use that, you know, to help us when we're investigating something, we want her to go up to it, she's more liable to go, trot, trot. Trot on! So I've asked her to go there, yeah? And then what I shall do is just pull her up with no no brakes to help her stop and just ask her to stop. Whoa! And you see her stop there. I skid to a stop on the road. Walk! Go on. We've got a big old truck coming down here now, up this narrow lane. And she'll be right up the side of it, won't care, look, can you see? Go on, my darling, up you go. Good girl. Look, this horse will also, with this type of horse, in my opinion, it's a, these are only my opinions, you know, it's not set in stone, but this little girl, the best thing you can do with her to have her, what I call in your pocket, to have her, you know, being pals with you, being wanting to work with you, being happy to be around you, you know, to want to be with you, is to groom her. And, you know, I'll sometimes go in there just with a brush, just for 10 minutes, just flick the old brush over her. Just brush her old mane and tail maybe and just talk sweet to her. And you know, you can see this mare go from a stary-eyed girl when you first go in, you know, stary-eyed, showing a bit of white round her eye, to you'll be grooming her and her old eyes are half shut and she'll drop her head down, you know. And when you go to leave, yeah, she'll come to you 
and you know stand stand right in front of you and rest your head on you over your shoulder or in your arms if you hold her up your arms out like a basket she stick her head in you know she likes that contact and and when I go out for last feed you know last feed and just check them before we go to bed look I'll just give her five minutes just give her a scratch or give her a quick brush over and like that and she seems to be content for the night then that I would say helps this little mare you know so you got to want to understand them try and understand them and, and try little things you know like that and for this little mare it works real well see we go to work look that'll do we're just steady now I should go and pull this cart, no trouble at all up there. Towel right off, ears prick forward, real good little worker. And we've only had a swish of the towel today, I don't know, half a dozen times. And I think she's settling down more to the job and it's, you know, with the old gastrogard, it don't take long to work, it soon sort of takes the pain away, I suppose it's like can't put your hand inside them, can you? And rub some cream on, some pseudo cream. But that's what it must feel like to them. So it takes that old inflammation away and that soreness. So, yeah. I'm very pleased with this little one.